They expected water. What they found instead changed everything. Just days ago, China's Change 6 mission returned with the first ever soil samples from the far side of the moon, and the results absolutely shocking. The region is much drier than scientists believed. This discovery might rewrite everything we thought we knew about lunar water. And it raises a deeper question. Have we misunderstood the moon's entire history? Welcome to Macroscope, where we explore the mysteries of space with clarity and curiosity. Subscribe now and join us on this journey into the unknown. Now, let's break down what Change 6 just uncovered and why it's sending ripples through the space science community. In June 2025, the Change 6 lander touched down in the moon's South Pole Lycan Basin, one of the oldest and deepest impact craters in the solar system. It collected two kilograms of lunar regolith, not from the near side, which we've studied for decades, but from the far side, the hidden, untouched hemisphere facing away from Earth. For years, scientists believed water might exist beneath the surface in the form of hydroxyl molecules. Some even hoped this side could offer higher concentrations due to its colder, shadowed terrain. But when Chinese and international labs analyzed the samples, they found almost no minerals, not even close to what we expected. The data shows the far side is far drier than the near side, by a significant margin. So what does that mean? First, it calls into question our assumptions about how water arrived on the moon. Was it delivered by comet impacts? Was it formed through solar wind interactions? Why would one side retain water and not the other? More importantly, this has huge implications for future moon missions, especially those focused on lunar colonization. NASA's Artemis program, for example, is targeting the South Pole region for future crewed landings. And China, along with Russia, plans to build a long-term international lunar research station by 2035. But if there's little to no water on the far side, that could mean fewer insider resources, which are crucial for survival, like drinking water, oxygen, or even hydrogen fuel. This also affects how we look for water on other planetary bodies. If we can't even predict water on our own moon accurately, how confident can we be in our models for Mars or Europa? The Change 6 findings are a humbling reminder that space still holds many surprises, and our theories must always be ready to adapt. But here's where things get even more interesting. The same sample contains signs of ancient volcanic glass, possibly pointing to violent eruptions in the moon's early history. Could this explain the water imbalance? Or does it suggest that the moon's crust is chemically different on each side? Some scientists now propose the near side might have been bombarded by water-rich meteorites, while the far side stayed geologically isolated. Others are revisiting a much older idea, that the moon's formation, likely from a colossal collision between Earth and a Mars-sized planet, may have created two chemically distinct hemispheres from the start. Whatever the cause, one thing is clear. The moon's far side is not just unexplored, it's fundamentally different. And change six, has just opened that door. More data will follow in the months ahead, as international labs examine the rest of the samples. But this is only the beginning. With Change 7 scheduled to launch in 2026, and NASA's Artemis 3 pushing for crewed landings soon after, the Moon is about to become the hottest scientific battleground in space. Will we find hidden reservoirs elsewhere? Could there still be deep ice beneath certain craters? Or, have we misunderstood lunar water entirely? This mystery has just begun, and we'll be covering every new discovery right here. If you found this fascinating, give it a like, drop your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe to Macroscope so you never miss what comes next.